The trees in this stand have several characteristics that uh, make them excellent candidates for pruning. Uh, first of all, we have a good diversity of the type of species that, you, that, uh, that qualify for pruning. Generally longer live shade tolerant species respond best to this treatment. This stand in particular has a lot of yellow birch, sugar maple, uh, white ash, as well as uh, white birch. There's also some red spruce, eastern hemlock, white pine. Um, they all qualify. Uh, these trees are young and very vigorous, so once they've been pruned, they'll have a chance to respond very well to the treatment uh, and really heal, heal up well and, and put on um, clean wood on top of the, the pruning. So young, vigorous trees, uh, generally smaller than 20 centimeters in diameter um, and tall enough that you're able to clear, that you're able to prune five meters of clear bowl uh, without negatively impacting the tree. So generally you want to prune to five meters and, and that would mean that you'd need a tree that was at least eight meters tall. These trees were pruned uh, three years ago. White birch responds very well to pruning. You can see several of the, the pruning cuts are healing over very nicely. The crop tree pruning treatment can be claimed in conjunction with either crop tree release or uh, selection management. I've got my uh, handsaw out. We're going to demonstrate uh, proper pruning technique on this uh, small branch at the base of a yellow birch tree. Um, it's really important to make sure that you limit amount, uh, the amount of uh, area, surface area that is open because this, uh, this is ultimately what the tree is going to have to, to heal up. So we're going to make three cuts being very careful not to, to do any damage to this area of the tree right here. So first cut, come underneath. Uh, second cut is on the outside, tree branch drops away, and again with our third cut, we're wanting to be very careful that we don't do any damage to the, to the base of the tree, and we want to limit the size. A proper pruning cut should be circular in shape and not oval. An, a, an oval size cut is, uh, has more surface area, and uh, the tree's going to have a harder time uh, healing that up. So our final cut. Right at the base of the branch collar, smallest surface area as possible, and it's going to be the easiest for this tree to, uh, to heal that wound. This is an example of a red pine tree here before we've, we've really begun a lot of pruning activity. Uh, the goal here is to, to trim off these dead branches uh, and, and bring them up the tree. Um, you can see some of the branches on the lower part of the tree that have already been pruned are starting to grow in quite nicely and we're really getting nice clean clear wood here on the outside of the tree. And so the goal here will be to just uh, to, to bring, these, uh, bring the pruning up the tree and, and uh, stop once we start to hit some live branches. This is a red pine plantation about 35 years old um, and we're going to be pruning some of the dead branches at the base of some of the trees here today. I'm going to demonstrate a three-step three pruning process known as a drop cut. Uh, this technique is, is meant to uh, avoid any, uh, any damage to the branch collar uh, by helping the, the pruned branch fall away from the tree when we're, uh, when we're cutting it. So I'm going to make three cuts. The first cut is underneath the branch that we're cutting. Uh, that, that really breaks the bark off and, and stops from any damage further down the tree. And we'll come outside of the first cut. see the branch fall straight down and then we'll make our final pruning cut close to the branch collar. This is an example of a uh, red pine stand after about 10 or 15 years of, uh, of gradual pruning. You can see many of the trees now, the knots have uh, grown over. These trees are now growing clear, uh, clear wood uh, and it's going to improve their value uh, once they are harvested in the future.